Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us for virtual Bulldogs Behind the Scenes featuring Amsoil Arena. My name is Molly Clevin, and I'm from the University of Minnesota Duluth Alumni Relations team. Today's event will likely spark old and fond memories of your time at UMD, and I couldn't be more excited to introduce our next guest. We are privileged to have Josh Brulo, the UMD Director of Intercollegiate Athletics with us today. Josh is in his seventh season in Bulldog Athletics. He was appointed uh, the Director of Athletics on, on April 3rd, 2013, and joined the Bulldog staff after spending the previous 13 years at the University of Notre Dame. In addition to overseeing all UMD head coaches, staff and administrative personnel, Josh is responsible for the student athlete experience developing and implementing a strategic plan, managing the departmental budget, directing the use of the university's athletic facilities, and leading fundraising and marketing efforts for the 16 sport program. A native of Warren, Rhode Island, Josh earned his bachelor's degree in sport management from the University of Massachusetts in 1999, and his MBA with a concentration in finance and communication from Notre Dame five years later. He and his wife, Meg, have one son, Michael, and reside in Duluth near the UMD campus. It is now my pleasure to welcome and hand it over to Josh. Well, thank you, Molly. Welcome all of Bulldog Country. I appreciate the introduction. It's nice to be connecting with everyone today and look forward to giving you a, a behind the scenes view of Amsoil Arena, just an incredible facility that we're so fortunate to have here. So thanks so much. Well, here we are flying over lovely Duluth. It's a little warmer out there, it looks like, when we took this video than today, but uh, we're coming over I-35, and it's really important to start off that uh, the Duluth Entertainment Convention Center is so much more than Amsoil Arena. It's a movie theater, it's a ballroom, it's the deck arena, it's a convention center, and, and much, much more. Uh, nestled in Canal Park, the iconic lift bridge park point in the aquarium. It is the hub and the epicenter in so many ways of sports and entertainment in Duluth and the Northland. As we come up to Amsoil Arena here, you can see the lift bridge and the deck arena off to the left. Uh, it's really been the home of Bulldog hockey since 1967. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. But Amsoil Arena is a showpiece of uh, sports facilities and college hockey. It opened up in 2010, technically. Here's 1967 on the left, Keith Huffer Christensen. Now we see the one of the biggest Bulldog logos ever made, the sign that went up on the building in 2014. So as you come up I-35, there's no question who is the home team of Amsoil Arena, the iconic UMD Bulldog men's and women's hockey teams. 2,100 men's games. 767 women's games, championships from the 80s. Here's Coach Cervic celebrating women's hockey national championships. So many special moments at the deck. But it all changed on December 30th, 2010. This is the lobby of the Ice Cube lobby of Amsoil Arena. And under the underpinnings of this space are old concrete blocks from the Globe Grain Elevator in Superior. There's also some uh, old reclaimed wood from Duluth Timber worked into the facility. The heritage and tradition of the Twin Ports are physically, emotionally, and otherwise built into this facility. As you turn around and begin to prepare to enter Amsoil Arena, you start to see the, the modern amenities that this facility, 203,000 square feet, 12 miles of concrete pilings, 18 tons of steel went into building this fabulous space. But now as we come into the bowl, you've got your ticket scan, you're coming into the game, you can see the school colors, you're getting excited for the event, maybe you can hear warm-ups happening on the ice. If you take a left, you go down our Heritage Hallway, where we celebrate the history and tradition of our two Bulldog hockey teams with team photos, all Americans, uh, our 33 women's Olympians, Behind this space is our Hobie Baker Award display uh, with six, the more than any other institution. We've got our men's hockey team awards named after uh, some key folks from our history and tradition dating back uh, over 76 seasons. It's a pretty special place. Make sure you take some time to take it all in. I think many of the folks that are viewing this today have been there. Uh, you've got the NHL puck wall where you can see 
um, all of the teams that have been played for. Here's the Bulldog Honorary Champion Wall, where you can uh, get your name up there amongst others. And now we've transitioned to the Champions Lodge, which is a membership-based space where you can uh, have a credible view of the ice above the Zamboni Tunnel, our impressive student section down to the left, and a full bowl, which we hope to have very soon uh, as, as we can put COVID behind us at some point here. But what a great view of the ice, access to a full bar. We actually have what we call a banner problem. We're running out of places to put the banners that celebrate all of the many championships. But it is so much more than just a hockey facility. 2,000 graduates a year, iconic concerts, James Taylor, Chicago, Elton John, Dirks Bentley, Cirque de Soleil, so much has happened in this space. Now we've gone upstairs to the suite level bar. Uh, this is a space, there's 20,000 feet of club space, uh, which is premium space for our most supportive patrons. This is an area where you can, uh, the suite access holders can connect with others, grab a drink, and also have an incredible high view of the ice. A lot of the wood here, was handmade by Brian Morse, one of the architects, and was reclaimed wood from Duluth Timber that he did uh, on evenings as this facility is being built. Now we're coming into one of the suites, a well-appointed space, comes with 20 tickets, 16 seats, uh, extensive high-end catering and food and beverage options for you to entertain friends, family, business associates, great sight lines of the ice, as you look over, great perspective up close to those banners that celebrate our past uh, hockey hockey number retirement folks, our tournament appearances, the Frozen Fours, and the national championships for both programs. Uh, now we're getting down in the private spaces. This is the Women's Hockey Player Lounge. It's a space where they'll spend some time between classes, grabbing a team meal, doing a bit of work. Uh, that that precious time between class and practice. This was just renovated within the last three years uh, and has really turned into a special space. And as we scan to the back of the room, you'll see the trophy case uh, that is backlit with all of their success over the years. Lots of Bulldog logos throughout the private spaces, celebrating the team pride and, and what it means to be a member of one of these two programs. Here we've got our international wall, celebrating all of the women that have competed for the Bulldogs who have had a presence on national teams. And you can see the global reach that this program has and the success. Uh, the second biggest Bulldog on the wall there as you exit the women's locker room. And here are the women's jersey, jerseys golds are for Saturday sweeps. That's a special jersey uh, that our women will wear. Uh, and it usually means you're having a good weekend. This is the entry between the two team spaces. All of the women's facilities are to your right, the men's to the left. Uh, this was updated uh, four years ago uh, with some, again, reclaimed wood, bulldog logos and custom appointed furniture. It's a special space. So when you bring guests and recruits in, you know you're coming to a place that is powerful and meaningful for these two programs. Here we have our heritage wall. This is a great mural that was done when the team spaces were put together. It really does celebrate the iconic coaches and student athletes that have been fans that built this program. There goes Dick Stewart, who turned, it in, turned these two programs into the dominant and national powers that they represent. Former coach and athletic director, Ralph Romano there. We've got our Hoagie, of course, the centerpiece who works the benches for both programs and so many familiar faces and names that have contributed to the legacy and their tradition that is Bulldog men's and women's hockey. As we turn the corner, you've got a little bit of a new space, which is the championship wall for the men. These three murals uh, commemorate and uh, denote all the people that contribute to the success there. This is the wall for the first men's championship uh, back in, in 2011, even though the first men's game at Amsoil Arena was a 5-0 loss to North Dakota. I think as most folks that are participating today know, that season culminated in a championship for the men's program. I was on the wrong side of the coin at that point. I was at the University of Notre Dame suffering a loss to the Bulldogs in the national semifinals. As you go further down the hallway, you get the Stanley Cup wall that commemorates former Bulldogs who as players 
uh, and front office staff members have succeeded at the highest level in men's professional men's professional hockey, excuse me, by winning a Stanley Cup. Familiar faces there. Derek Plant currently on our staff, uh, Norm McIver and a few other front office folks. Norm has just joined the NHL expansion franchise, the Seattle Kraken. This is a fairly new display that was added just on the other side of the men's hockey lounge. And you'll see inside that space in a little bit. Tom Curvers, Chico Resch, uh, and Matt Niskanen, all great Bulldogs over many, many years representing what it means to be uh, successful at the highest level. Here is the logo in the men's locker room. If you step on the logo, you will be fine. Please remember that if you're ever on a tour of the locker room. Uh, this is the space ready to go for game day with the the iconic gold bulldog on the front of the jerseys. Locker rooms are a very sacred, special space. Uh, here we've got the changing room. Both programs have very similar spaces. When you come in from outside, you change out of your, your street clothes, as they say, and prepare to head in the locker room. This is an important space so that we can keep the locker room clean. And it really begins that mental transition as you're shifting from whether it's academics or other activities into getting ready to be part of team activities. Here we are inside the men's hockey player lounge. Uh, you can see the NHL wall that uh, was done about a year ago. Uh, this modern space and in, in display really captures the 60 Bulldogs and the teams that they played for. Uh, we've seen record numbers of Bulldogs in the NHL in the last few years, generally hovering between 9 and 11 on, we've enjoyed seeing some of our, our young men who have uh, had frozen foreign championships uh, move quickly to the NHL, like most recently Carson Kuhlman uh, and some others. So it's, it's a lot of fun to see them go on and have the success. And I will tell you, the recruits love to see uh, the NHL success because those are the things that they aspire to. Our women love to see the Olympic success and our men love to see the professional success. I could spend a lot of time going through all of the teams. I love watching our fans uh, at the puck wall and taking pictures and pointing to their favorite Bulldogs. It's been great now that I've been here uh, almost eight years to get to know so many of these folks. And we've actually got Jason Garrison, who I'm sure many of you will remember. You may have seen he's come back to finish his degree this year. Now we're in a critical space to supporting our student athletes, the athletic training room. This is uh, identical facilities for our men and our women here we've got an underwater treadmill to help with rehab this is an nhl quality item and something that is absolutely critical to getting our bulldogs back on the ice we're going to move now into the place where i think a lot of the real work happens and that's the strength and conditioning facility there are far more hours put in on these spin bikes and on these weight racks than probably in the games but the difference is often made in preparation as we know for success in sports and our men and our women work incredibly hard here with Dr. Suze Hoppy and, and strength coach Jason Aldrich to get in the best possible, strongest physical shape that they can. As we fly back over the space, it is great to see Amsoil one more time. I hope to see so many of you at the game soon. What an iconic facility, great representation of UMD operating at the highest level, a hub for so many activities. And, and, and was really built with such community support, almost entirely constructed with contractors from the Twin Sports Minnesota. I spent some time with Dan Russell preparing for today, uh, who was the longtime executive director. And while I knew a lot about this, it was great to learn the story one more time about the community getting behind it, about the joint venture between the university, the state, uh, and, and the deck and how it's really turned into such a showpiece and something for all of us to be proud of. Whether we're big hockey fans or not, it is a critical facility to the success of the university. Uh, it is a critical facility to the success of the city. So I appreciate you listening to me and would love to get into some questions and answers. Molly, I will turn it over to you as the MC. Wonderful. Well, thank you, Josh, for that tour. We are going to start our videos here and get started on our question and answer. Um, so just as a reminder, this is the time, um, if you did not submit questions ahead of time, you can use the Q&A button on the bottom of your screen and we will, um, I think we should have plenty of time to get through as many of these as we can. So I think to kick it off, uh, 
could you just reiterate what year did uh, Amsoil become kind of the designated arena from when it was Deck Arena um, to Amsoil Arena? Well, it was a mid-year transition. So the first game was actually December 30th of 2010. So it was a mid-season transition, uh, which which is a heavy lift, frankly, to make. It, typically, when you see these new facilities come online or major renovations, it's it's in between seasons. But uh, it was something that that uh, I didn't live through, but I have heard uh, from many folks was exceptionally well done to get our fans transitioned, to get the teams transitioned, and uh, it was the midst of the 10-11 season uh, to, to make that move over to, to Amsoil. I, I saw a clip the other day of one of the first practices uh, that our teams had, and the architects made sure they were there to see the first time that those skates hit the ice in official capacity. I'm sure that was an incredibly exciting moment. Well, and on the topic of the deck arena, um, is the deck ice still in use? And if so, what is it used for? It, it is. The The ice is still used often for um, if there are youth hockey tournaments in town. Sometimes uh, we will use it as a practice space, but it is a it is a facility that is absolutely still used. We've talked a few times about doing maybe a, a throwback game in there, an exhibition game in there, just to to to. to um, have our student athletes experience what was an incredible um, facility and, and and one that so many folks were so fond of and remain fond of and it's we're, we're fortunate to have both sheets available and, and to see the deck used the deck is also still used for home shows and other conventions that that occur that space is is pretty heavily used still so then one more follow-up on the ice how long does the amsoil, amsoil uh, maintain its ice uh, the ice is in there depending upon the year, um, generally from August, so we can get some early season practices and skating in uh, and, until April. They'll put some back in for the summer camps, but I would say it's maintained about three quarters of the year. Perfect. Um, a question wondering about the meaning behind gold and maroon seats. Is that random or is that intentional? Well, I, I've heard different stories on this piece, so I'm probably not all that qualified to answer it. I do know that there was definitely a plan to do it in a space and in, in a way uh, that represented both colors, and and that there was some architectural influence in to do it in in a meaningful fashion, as though gold was poured on the ice and it splashed onto the seats. Is the description that's been used used with me? So it it certainly represents both of our school colors. And uh, we're, we're very proud to, to skate in front of the maroon and gold. We like when all of the seats are filled best and Bulldog Country is there cheering on uh, the, the, the Bulldogs. But uh, that's the, those are the stories that I've heard about the nature of the two colors. Perfect. And speaking of seats, uh, do you have a favorite spot in the arena um, to watch Bulldog hockey? Yeah, I, I like to be up in the sweet bar. I think it provides an incredible view of, of the contest. It gives me the opportunity to interact with our great Bulldog supporters. Uh, and and uh, I find myself pacing a little, little bit throughout the games, but um, that's, that's, that's my nature. But I, I, that's my favorite view. I also love the upper deck uh, on the red line. I think those for the the, the core hockey fans who want to take in all of the ice and have the best view of the game, I think the upper deck center ice is, is, those are some incredible seats. Perfect. So are there any plans to upgrade parts of Amsoil? Yeah, we're, we're uh, particularly in the team spaces that are the home, that, that are really the home away from home for our, our programs. There have been a lot of updates in that space and we'll continue to do that. Uh, the Amsoil Arena really provides an incredible recruiting advantage for us. It is a first class award-winning facility uh, that, that student athletes at the highest level want to be a part of. And we're going to work to keep those spaces um, at, at, the, at the, the top level. Um, it, it's been great to see other places try to emulate a lot of what we've done. Uh, that also means we've got to continue to deliver and, and improve those spaces. But much of what you saw in the team spaces is fairly new. And we'll continue to do that. There are some spaces, Amsoil Arena, you know, about 10 years old now. There are some things that I think uh, the facility is reviewing to keep it um, one of the premier facilities in college hockey. And as a, as a prominent uh, concert venue, it was really built for uh, college hockey, but also to make it flexible enough to be an exceptional concert venue. Perfect. 
Uh, question about the NCHC pod. Um, was AMSOIL in any of the considerations as, uh, for a venue for that? Yeah, we, we certainly did talk about hosting the NCHC pod uh, in, in, in Duluth with, with the great facilities we have at AMSOIL. Uh, but at the time, given some of the state restrictions ar around activities and multi-team events uh, and some of the testing capabilities that the University of Nebraska Medical Center had, uh, the, Omaha was was the best place for it at the time. Okay. We have a couple questions about the student section and where the band sits. So the first question um, is curious, where does the um, student athletic band sit in regards to the- recovery? Sure, they are, they are adjacent to the student section, kind of tucked up in the lower bowl under the overhang, um, high enough that the music can project over the glass but still part of the lower bowl and uh, connected to the student section. Uh, they do a great job. We love the band. We have kept the band incredibly busy with all of our postseason competitions and uh, frozen fours, and they are dedicated uh, making long trips to Buffalo and Chicago. And uh, St. Paul was close, but certainly very exciting. Uh, we've had them at our women's um, semifinals for the WCHA. We've kept the band busy and we love the band and we can't thank the band enough the energy that they provide, the time commitment, and their talent are amazing. And then as a follow-up to that, um, is there any talk about dedicating or naming the student section? Uh, so I don't know that it's officially named. It's a great question. Um, the student group is called the Penalty Box, and, and they've got some student leadership. I don't know that we've discussed uh, naming them or not. I think it's a great idea and something that we should talk with our student leadership about. We're, we're fortunate and not that we wanna to spend too much time on COVID today, but we were able to have uh, the beginning of some student attendance a couple of weeks ago for both of our hockey programs. And it was so exciting to have them there for the Miami series. They were very limited in number, uh, but they were masked and distanced. And I personally loved the first time that we scored watching them do their socially distanced high fives. That was uh, awesome and great to have the energy that they bring. I can't wait till we can have a packed house again. Uh, the student section delivers every time and we love the penalty box student section. Perfect. Uh, question about former uh, student athletes is, are there ever any alumni games um, where former student athletes get back together and have kind of a fun tournament? Yeah, there are. It's usually around the, the Christmas holiday. Uh, I think uh, those those are always fun. You hear all the, the, the stories about them. I think they try to keep them close to the public because uh, you, you never know what can happen in, in, in some of those games. But um, they, uh, they, they do. They get together. They still play. It's fun to watch. And the connectivity between the generations is so much fun. The you, you can have two players that may have played 40 or 50 years apart that stay connected because of their passion around Bulldog hockey. So a question about uh, fans and students um, being able to watch the game. Um, is Amsoil um, opening up for the public to watch any of the this season's games? Probably not yet this year. The, the state has a limit of 150 total capacity for sports uh, events. And I think that's gonna continue through the season. Uh, there's only a handful of games left this year. We're really focused and optimistic for what next season will look like to get our season ticket holders, our students, our fans, the band, and all of our, our key uh, supporters back in the Amsoil Arena and, and start chasing those attendance records again. I think our all-time crowd was uh, last year with uh, 7,711 fans. Uh, against North Dakota. Perfect. Um, and then uh, just as a follow up to that in the past, I know that our two offices have partnered on watch parties. Um, is that something that you can see happening uh, for this year as a way to continue our fan engagement? Well, that would be great. We hope that we've got watch parties for all sorts of our Bulldog teams both the men's and women's hockey programs are ranked in the top six in the country right now. Our women's basketball team 
is is ranked in the top six in the country. So I think you're going to see Bulldog teams back in the NCAA tournaments as usual, and hopefully we can rally the alums around the country and have some virtual watch parties and and get folks fired up about cheering on uh, their 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 fellow Bulldogs as they chase championships yet again. Perfect. And speaking of playoffs, um, was there any talk about using Amsoil for the upcoming NCHC playoffs? Yes, yes, same, pro probably a very similar answer to um, the, the question about the pod. Amsoil, the facility, dilute the community, provide incredible opportunities and infrastructure to host events. Uh, we are going to have the Women's Ice Hockey National Championship in 2023 coming up. Uh, we're still scheduled to host the 2021 Outdoor Men's and Women's Conference Track Championship. But right now, with the, the restrictions that are in place um, to, to mitigate COVID, uh, we're, we're just not able to host some of those events uh, here at this time. But look forward to doing so soon and looking forward to getting COVID behind us as much as possible. We're getting it to a place where it's managed and we can begin to have larger events and, and get our fans back in the building where they belong. Right. Uh, just a question about broadcasting the games. Is there any chance of getting uh, the Bulldogs games broadcasted more widely, specifically within the Twin Cities? Uh, so, yeah, a couple things there. First and foremost, NCHC TV um, is a great place to watch our men. WCHA TV, a great place to watch our women for, from a streaming perspective. Um, We've got an incredible broadcast partner in Duluth, the My9 Network, which is part of the, the uh, KBJR and, and CBS3 affiliates. Um, and we do get some games occasionally on Fox Sports North uh, and Fox 9 Plus will pick them up. So pay close attention to our website. Uh, it, it is a priority to be on in the cities, but with the COVID year, uh, we, we've had to focus a little bit more on our local broadcasters. We, our men's program on the 27th against St. Cloud will be on CBS Sports National. So that one, uh, if you have that in your, in your streaming or your cable satellite package, you'll be able to watch that one. But all of the, t all the TV broadcasting information, if you go to umdbulldogs.com, click on your sport, click on schedule, you'll see where the men's and women's games are gonna be broadcasted. And we're always looking for opportunities to expand that footprint. Um, but we've, we've got to focus um, on, on our local partner who is, has been such a strong driver of broadcasting so many of our sports uh, over the years. But we're, we're always looking to expand that footprint as well. I appreciate the feedback. We have a question here about whatever happened to the Maroon Loon. <laughs> yes, well, the Maroon Loon is still alive. I can promise you that um, on occasion, um, the Maroon Loon will make an appearance. The Maroon Loon is from, from the pictures and the stories was a fixture of the deck facility uh, and, and a great uh, mascot accompaniment to Champ. So um, uh, we, we, we talk about the Maroon Loon often and, and on occasion, I believe the Maroon Loon, I will not give away his identity. Although I think many of you know him, he's still in Duluth. The Maroon Loon will make, make an appearance periodically. So you just never know when the Maroon Loon will show up. Perfect. Well, I think we've got one more question here and it's for you, um, kind of a personal, what, what is your favorite memory of Amsoil Arena? Oh, goodness. I, you know, I, I think back to one of the, the cool moments uh, early on in, in my tenure is we hadn't had, with the conference realignments, we hadn't had the University of Minnesota compete here uh, in a few years. And we were able to, to, to get them back in Amsoil Arena and the fever pitch at puck drop from our fans, the Bulldog fans making noise and supporting uh, their favorite team. Uh, that was the loudest that I can recall it. And that was also at a time that we had really upped, upped our game as I'll put it around our video production in the, in the, the puck drop video that uh, led by our efforts by Brian Nystrom, our assistant athletic director uh, for marketing and corporate relations was just the ultimate um, <laughs> adrenaline video. And, and I just remember how loud and exciting uh, Amsoil was and seeing this facility with our incredible fan base uh, was, was pretty special. Um, anecdotally, I'll say that one of the other moments was uh, when 
the Bulldogs went to Chicago uh, for the Frozen Four, and so many of our fans made that trip down. Um, it was it was great to see the support, uh, especially being there with with my previous employer, uh, University of Notre Dame, who may not have understood uh, the power of our fan base outside the hockey space. Um, it was it was nice to show my former colleagues that I went to a pretty special place that has just some incredible support and fans. So that was on a, on a personal level. Uh, those were a couple of really cool moments and uh, forever appreciative to the support of Bulldog Country for our student athletes and helping empower them to accomplish some special things in the classroom community and of course competition. Wonderful. Well, on that note, thank you so much, Josh, for taking the time to share with us an inside look of Amsoil in our Bulldog Hockey Program. Um, if you have other questions that weren't answered today, um, you can feel free to reach out to the UMD Athletics Department and a staff member will respond back. Additionally, if you're not an alum of UMD, um, our office alumni relations average about one to two of these virtual behind the scenes webinars per month. Um, and you can be added to our email list by emailing our office at alumni at d.umn.edu. So again, a big thanks to Josh, and we hope that you all join us again in the future. Um, thank you and have a wonderful day. Thank you, Molly. As always, go Bulldogs.